Good morning, this is Emerald Lilac Green coming to you once again from the schoolhouse where the most important work in the country is getting done. And today we are going to be talking about academic vocabulary. It's going to be an interactive video and you may want to watch it twice or you may want to stop and pause as you work through the video on academic vocabulary, but it's going to be exciting. We're going to be talking about lots of words and, and lots of ways to teach academic vocabulary to help our students. We are going to be talking about building academic vocabulary. What do teachers need to know and be able to do? And really, what is academic vocabulary? We are going to start with uh, an, an enduring question, a very philosophical question. What does it really mean to know a word? Is knowing a word a continuum? that goes from no knowledge of the word into some general sense of the word, like knowing that the word radiant means sunny, uh, onto limited use, that radiant can mean happy, onto rich knowledge of a word with it, even extending it into different contexts, like radiant could mean a beautiful bride. Is knowing a word being uh, on a continuum, or is it more qualitative? Um, generalization that allows students to define a word all the way up to uh, having the word available to them uh, instantly in their in their uh, long-term memory so that they can use it in multiple ways. Or uh, does knowing a word mean some of both of those? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And look, here's another picture of a nice, friendly educator. Dr. Isabel Beck, isn't, doesn't she have just the kindest smile? Aren't educators just the friendliest, nicest people? We're going to talk today about uh, her work in her two books, Bringing Words to Life and Creating a Robust Vocabulary. And she, her studies have shown that words can be divided into tiers. Tier 1 words are those everyday basic survival skill words, and those amount to about 8,000 words. And most children learn these by certainly by fourth grade. Uh, most kids know them by second grade. Tier 2 words uh, we're going to talk about and then we're going to come back to. These are academic vocabulary words that are found across texts and subjects. They are multiple use words, multiple meaning words that are very useful to students. And these are the words that have the most impact on student growth and achievement. And that, those words amount to about 7,000 to another 8,000 words. They equal actually about 700 words a year uh, if you consider all of the years of the student's education. And then tier three words are, are less frequent words, infrequently used words that are um, specific to a particular uh, subject matter area or that they uh, can be taught once in the context of however it's used and then dealt with quickly and then moving on in the reading. So tier three words are domain specific that are not very frequent uh, words that wouldn't appear frequently. So we're going to talk about today the work of that nice Dr. Isabel Beck. There's some more criteria for tier two words when considering those. How important is the word? How useful is it to the student? Does it appear frequently across a variety of subjects? What's the instructional potential for that word? If you teach a word, can the student use that word in other subject matter areas? Can they use it in other areas of their life? Can they build useful connections to other words and concepts? And then what's the conceptual understanding of a Tier 2 word? Uh, we need to consider that when thinking of or trying to decide if a word is a Tier 2 word. Uh, conceptual understanding helps students provide precision and specificity in building their word knowledge. We want our students to be able to be good communicators in their reading and in their writing and in their speaking, to be able to express their thoughts adequately and expressively. Uh, and so that's where that conceptual understanding comes in. Moving on. How would you categorize these words? There's a whole list of words here, and you might want to pause or um, stop the screen for a moment and take some time to discuss. How might you categorize these words? Is Tier 1 words, Tier 2 words, Tier 3 words, and why would you put those words in those categories? So just take a moment to discuss those. I would have 
place clock, baby, and sign as tier one words, survival words, words that kids need to know. Now, sign is a word that has multiple meanings and multiple uses, like use sign language, a stop sign, signing a uh, petition or a letter, but um, it's still a tier one word. And then uh, words like entomologist, uh, nanotechnology, pharaoh, those would probably be tier three words that could be just dealt with within the context of whatever is being read, or those words are not going to be words that, we're, that we would see frequently. Uh, those would have been my choices, but you can justify uh, others. So before you teach vocabulary, before teaching a particular chapter or section, a reading selection, story, poem, article, speech, whatever it is you're going to teach, you might want to consider so that we can begin increasing our students' word knowledge to identify uh, maybe five to 12 target words that might meet those tier two criteria. And then plan some focus activities that we will talk about um, in these subsequent slides so that we can help our students begin to really truly build deep word knowledge so that they can become useful word users. Here's an activity that's a lot of fun. And the interesting thing about these activities is you know they could apply to uh, an elementary school and they can apply to high school or college or even as an adult, uh, depending on the words that you use. But this would be used to teach uh, a, a focus word that you've are, or a target word that you've already taught. Uh, I'll say some things, and you tell me how, they, how these things would protect you. There's our focus word, our target word. How would a potholder protect you? A smoke alarm, mittens, seat belts, and then you would always circle back to the, talk about the actual word. What word are we learning? Protect. Here's a different activity. It would be used after you've taught uh, the word launched in context and you've taught uh, what it means and you've worked with the word for a little while. If, I, if what I say could be launched, yell launch. If you think they are not things that could be launched, stay silent. Could I launch an elephant? Could I launch a rocket? A tree? Some fireworks? And then again, circling back, what's our focus word? And you could use this method of teaching words with any uh, word that you choose at any level. Here's, this is a different one. After you've reviewed several words, it would be used as a review activity. So let's review. We've talked about the words launched, gleeful, and astonished. Which would you want to launch, a kite or a car? If your teacher made you feel gleeful, what might she or she say? Which word would make you more astonished to find a bird bone or a dinosaur bone? The interesting thing about this review activity is that the kids are having to practice their application skills. So again, we're moving into those higher level thinking skills because they're having to take the words and use them in new ways. Which scenario best illustrates the word banter? A husband and wife argue about what to have for dinner or a husband and wife tease each other about who ate more at dinner? Which scenario best illustrates the word retort? The player makes a quick answer after the referee calls a foul on him, or the player complains to the coach about the foul that the referee calls on him. Again, you're asking students to um, apply uh, these words to different situations so that the whole time that they're working with the words, even though it seems fairly innocuous and fairly uh, even maybe entertaining, uh, the students are doing the thinking, and they're, they're building that word knowledge. <clears throat> Here's a way to um, review several words that you've learned uh, that, again, requires the kids to think about um, how to use the words. Would you pay homage to something tolerable? Would you have compassion for someone who was imperious? Would you suppress a profound thought? Would blurting out your thoughts be an example of decorum? When would compensation be insufficient? And again, you're teaching, uh, we're using this activity with the understanding that these would have been words that would have already been taught. So at the end of a unit or at the end of a chapter, you could take those words that you've taught and devise some kind of activity like this in, in writing, in speaking, as a class activity, as a small group activity. Um, it's very versatile, the, the vocabulary practice activities. Here's a different one. Here's your continuum. From least energy to most energy, how much energy does it take to meander down the hall? 
How much energy would it take to vault over a car, to banter with your best friend for an hour, to berate someone at the top of your voice, to stalk a turtle, to be a spectator at a concert? You could have them uh, list the words in, in order of least energy to most energy. From Appendix A of the Common Core Standards um, on page 32, it says that research suggests that if students are going to grasp and retain words and comprehend text, they need incremental repeated exposure in a variety of contexts to the words they are trying to learn. When students make multiple connections between a new word and their own experiences, they developed a nuanced, oh, what a good word that is, and flexible understanding of the word they are learning. In this way, students learn not only what a word means, but also how to use that word in a variety of contexts. So again, I ask, what does it really mean to know a word? And you know, those are just good teaching practices. Learning that vocabulary, teaching that academic vocabulary to help our students become better users of our, of our language, that's just good teaching practice. But isn't it neat that it fits right in to the shifts that are going to be required for Common Core teaching? Look there. Number six shift in ELA, academic vocabulary. Look there. In the assessments, academic vocabulary. So not only are we pr practicing good teaching skills, good instructional practice, but we're also meeting their needs for what they're going to need to know for, to make that change to those new assessments in 2014-2015. We want our students to be word nerds. We want them to think of the word word nerd as a compliment. We want them to accept the compliment of being a word nerd. Wouldn't it be interesting if a kid walked up to you and said word and you gave them one? Mandibular, meticulous, rigor. How cool would that be? We want our kids to think of that as being a compliment. For more information on teaching academic vocabulary, there are some handouts listed here that you're welcome to go to, and all of them are very good handouts that can be very usable. And that nice Dr. Isabel Beck's fine books, Creating a Robust Vocabulary, are bringing words to life. And look here, Bob, Dr. Robert Mazzano's book, Building Academic Vocabulary, and more information at, of course, USD 413's Porta Portal. This is Emerald Lilac Green coming to you from the schoolhouse where we are working hard. Educators are always working hard to grow great minds and add wrinkles to brains. Thank you for watching. This is Emerald Lilac Green and in tribute and honor of my far distant cousin from Canada, Red Green, we'd like to close again with the teacher's, uh, with the teacher's prayer or the teacher's oath. I am a teacher. I can change. If I have to, I guess. <laughs>